Hello, and, and good to be with you today. And I'm here, I'm Dr. David Andrade, your host today, with my beautiful wife, Kathy Andrade. And we recently got married. As you can see, she is absolutely beautiful. And she's going to be my co-host uh, from here on in. And uh, we're just so, this is a great day today for me to have her. Uh, uh, we're, uh, recently we moved uh, to a different part of the United States, but we're going to continue to be with you as part of the Cross family. So today I want to talk to you about the image of the invisible God. We are sons and daughters created in his image and likeness. Would you like to say just a quick hello, my dear? Uh, yeah, I would. Hi, everybody. Yeah. This is all fairly new to me, so this is an exciting time for me to be able to learn to be a part of what David is doing and has been doing. Amen. So uh, we're, we're starting a series because we're working on a global school of missions, and we would like you to be part of that. The whole world needs the gospel. The whole world needs to know who this Jesus Christ is. It's Jesus that can save the world. He can save you today. He can take you from the place that you're at and, and change you from the inside out. Well, we're going to talk about what God did at the very beginning. I'm going to start in the book of Genesis, and I'm going to start with the when God created man, explain a couple of things that happened there, and God's order, his design, his will, uh, and his image that pertains to you. And, and in understanding that, it'll give you a greater understanding of God's purpose uh, for creating man and what, what, why you are here. Because you are not here to live in poverty. You are not here to live... In bondage, you are not here to, to be bound by, by sin. God wants to free you today. And that's why we are uh, here today. So we're going to start in the book of Genesis. And we're going to look at the sixth day of creation. I'm going to uh, present some things to you. I'm not going to, to uh, we're not going to look at all the scriptures. And we'll do that in another program. But right now... Uh, we're going to look at what God did. It says in Genesis chapter 20, or uh, Ge uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. So God said to himself, he's speaking to himself, and he said, let us make man in our image, in the image of God created he him, them. It's actually image and likeness. Um, let, God said to himself, let us make man in, in our image and in our likeness. In the image of God created he him. Him was a male and a female created he him. And then he blessed him. Well, let's, let's talk a, a little bit about what God did. God had already created angels. He created the cherubim, seraphim. There, there were creatures. Uh, he created everything in the heavens and the earth. But uh, and he had, Lucifer had already been created. He was a being that, uh, that led a third of the angelic hosts of heaven. And they, uh, and they followed him. He was in charge of, of worship between the heavens and the earth. He had, a, he had a job to do in God's kingdom. But God created man different than angels. He, man was not created in the image of angels. He was created in the image of God. But it wasn't just um, just one part of God. It says, it says, let us. What that means is God uses the word Elohim. That word pertains to the entire Godhead. So man was created in the image of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's, what, that's why Satan was so angry at this creation because he was not created that way. He was created in the image of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to have fellowship and intimacy with the Godhead. That is why you are created. You are created to have intimacy with, this God, the, with the whole Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that is the image that God created you in. And he created you to have this relationship with him. And then it says that he blessed 
man. He blessed the man and the woman. He blessed them. That was the first marriage. It says uh, in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, it says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. What is because? What is that because? That because is an intimacy relationship. It was, it was the way that God created man and, and these two beings. And it's very interesting that it says that God fashioned a man. And we have to understand that, that God didn't just say let every time. When he said let there be, there was. But sometimes he called forth out of the oceans. He called forth and, and or he, he, uh, he, call, he uh, uh, said let there be and there was. But when it came to a man on the sixth day, he created a man. It actually says that he fashioned him. And we need to understand God's, what God's intent was because this, as a man, he fashioned him. What does that word mean? It means that God literally took his time to create a man. He created him in love. You were created in love to love and be loved. And, and it's not a love that was defiled by sin. It is a love that, that was perfect and whole and, and complete. And there was no defilement. It was the love of God, this love that it says in, in the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 3, it says that being rooted and grounded in this love, it's talking about the same love that, that uh, in creation, you might be able to comprehend with all the saints, what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height? What does that mean? And to know the love of God that passes all understanding, to know the love of Christ that passes all understanding. See, when God created you, you were not a mistake. He created, you are created on purpose. You are created in love to be loved and to love. That, 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 is, that is what God did. God created, everything was created in love. And, and then he placed man in his most perfect place, which was the garden. And then for him, he fashioned a woman. Can you understand what he did? He took from man's side a woman and, and that woman, it says she was also fashioned. She was fashioned in the image of God for the man. And God's plan was to have offspring that were in his image and likeness. Not in the image of Adam and Eve, but in the image of God. And we are created beings. We are not above God. That, that, that was Satan's mistake. He he wanted to be above God. He said, I will ascend above the throne of God. He wanted, he, he, he took a, tried to take a place that was not his. He thought and said, I will be like the most high. But in that he was cast down from that place in heaven to a, a, to a lower place where up to now he's been, he's been working to undermine the creation of God. God created man, and he was, and and it was love that was defiled in the garden. Where there's not love, there is law. I had a brother tell me that yesterday. Where there's a lack of the love of God, there is the need for the law, and the law we and so we have laws to try to to protect us because love was defiled in the garden. And God's original plan for man, because see, God did not just create man in His image, in the, in the image of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He created him in His likeness. See, God has compassion and love for His creation, and He placed man in a position that He would have love for the creation of God. He would love like God loved, the same nature that God had in Him he would have for his creation. See, that's why we're here. We're not here to be at war with one another. We're not here to hate. We're here to establish God's kingdom. God, 
created man not to establish man's kingdom, but God's kingdom. That's why we're here. We're here to establish the kingdom of God. You have a purpose and for your being here. And it is not to be defiled by, the, by things that happen around you. It is to be in the image and likeness of God. God is still doing the same thing today. He still wants, he is still looking to form sons and daughters in his image and likeness. So what do you, my dearest, what do you feel about that? God, God created you in his image and likeness. And, and that's what God is after right now. He's after sons and daughters in his image and likeness. He, and and you, that is your purpose. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about what Jesus did for you. Because Jesus did three things at, at Calvary. When he died for you, he, there are three very essential things that he did. He, Jesus came, he said, to destroy the works of the devil. And the devil to this day has been to, trying to destroy the creation of God. He does it, he's at work in everything. You may not be able to see him visibly, but his mark is there. Every day he's doing something that is destructive to the, to the creation of God. Every day he's at work. He, uh, the Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. The Jesus said in, in John chapter 10, he said, the devil comes to rob, kill, and destroy. But the 10th verse says, but I have come that you might have life and the most abundant, the most abundant life. You know that the most abundant life is not more abundant. It's the most. It's the tilt of the most that you can have. So we have to understand that what it says that being rooted and grounded in love, being rooted and grounded, that's the foundation of everything. We can't even begin to understand who God is unless we're rooted and grounded in his, his love. And he wants to reveal himself in us to a world that needs him so much, free of the bondage of sin and death. Now I want to Let's talk about a minute for what Jesus did at the cross. Jesus went to the cross for you. But I want you to know that it says in, in John chapter 2 that he didn't just pay for, a, it wasn't a group salvation. He paid for every sin that, was, that will ever be committed. That's why God is so just. If we have the, the, it says that by grace we are saved through faith and not of ourselves. We can't earn it. It's God's gift to us because of what Jesus did. It is so complete that, that the only way that we will not have the salvation of God is we just tell God we don't want it. What Jesus did was so complete. He didn't just pay for the, for the sins of the whole world, like a group uh, uh, salvation, he individually bore at the cross every sin. It says he's not only the propitiation for our sins, that's about the sins of the church, but he is the propitiation for the whole world. In other words, there's not one sin that he did not cover at Calvary. That's how complete that salvation is for you. That's how, and, and all you have to do is ask him for his gift of salvation. It says, as many as call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And, and so we come to him and we ask him, we say, Lord, forgive us, I, I have sinned. We take acknowledgement that we have sinned and we turn away the a knowledge, a, a mental consent to turn away from our sin to God. And he is there for us to give us this gift of salvation. And this gift of salvation is so real that it changes us from the inside out. 
It is the new man that is manifest in us. Now let's talk about what Jesus bore at the cross. Did you know that at the cross, Jesus took on the devil and not just the devil, but the, all the demonic forces of hell completely at the cross came against Jesus. They were trying to stop him from, from finishing his work. Remember when, when the, uh, the, 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 there was a tempter on one side of the cross, one of the thieves, he said, he said, why don't you come down from the cross and save yourself? See, that was the, the enemy speaking to Jesus, just like uh, the enemies would use people to speak to Jesus while he was here on, on the earth. The, the, there was an enemy at the cross declaring, get down from that cross, you don't need to be here. But that was the devil speaking because the devil threw his very best at Jesus on that cross. When Jesus was up on the cross, he was bearing hell at his greatest torrent, and he bore it. I want to say something to you. That's something that Jesus did that is so significant that we need to understand what it was that Jesus did. It was so awesome what he did for us. You know that he didn't just bear the, our iniquity. He didn't just bear hell and everything that it throws at us. He bore the curse. What is the curse? The curse is anything that comes against you that is in alignment with, with heaven. It says that he bore our sicknesses and our sorrows. He bore, uh, and by his stripes we are healed. That means that he bore all, all disease, he bore all of our sicknesses. He bore, he bore all of uh, our troubles, all the things that come our way, that distract us, that discourage us, a mental illness. He bore it all. He took it on at Calvary, and he bore it all. And, and I say to you is that if Jesus bore that at the cross, you don't need to bear it too. You don't need to remain in your shame because Jesus bore it on your behalf. He paid for it. And isn't that sweet, hon, that how great our Lord, what our God did for him, yes. for us? He did that for us and he did that for you today. That's the gift of God for you today. There's no reason why you need to bear the iniquity. There's no reason why you need to be in shame because somebody bore it for you already. That you, there's no reason for two people to bear it when, the, when someone who is greater than you bore it at the cross on your behalf. I'd like to read some scripture with you real quickly before we close. And then I'd like to invite you to receive this, this wonderful Savior, this wonderful Lord that died for you at the cross. Because this gift to you is free. It is a free gift from God to you. It is there to change you from the inside out. I'm going to give tell you something that I know happened at the cross. See, when Jesus said it was finished, he wasn't crying. He wasn't moaning in pain. He was smiling. He never stopped being Jesus at the cross. He never stopped. He said, he said it is finished. He was smiling in victory at the cross, up at his Father. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. It is so complete. There is nothing left to be done. It is done. And he did that for you. It says when he himself had purged us from our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the Father, ever there to make intercession for you. As when we come to Christ, Jesus is our intercessor. He was our sa sacrifice. You know, the scripture says that he created all things, that, that, that creation came through him. And the same person who, who died for you is the same person who created you in the fashion to be loved 
he loves you that much. And he made a way, not only that, that, so that you can be free from hell to come, how is it to live on hell on this earth and then have to go to hell again? That's not your portion. God created you in his image and liked us to, to be returned into that image, to, to spend eternity with him in a place where God is. And the only way, because Jesus paid the complete penalty, not only for our sins, but for every sin, God is just in saying to you, if you turn his, the gift down, the, the gift is come and, the, and live your life with me. That's what heaven is. We're living in the place where God is, where, where things that everything that was created God, with God in perfection remains there. And the only way that you will not spend that eternity with God is to turn away his gift. I'm inviting you right now to receive this wonderful gift of God. It says in, in Romans, or uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, it says, when he had self had perfect, forever perfected those that are being sanctified, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. That's what Jesus is doing right now. He's saying, that's mine. And when we come to him, he says, he's mine, Father. I paid the penalty for him. I died for him. So he's mine, or she's mine. Lord God, send, send your salvation to them today. And God brings us salvation. You know, God literally gives us an angel to work with us and to protect us because that's why he created angels. We were talking about the difference between angels and man. God, God created angels ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. You have a, a, an angel when you come to him ready to, to work with you to help you. And the Holy Spirit will be with you also to begin to guide you on the ways of God. So I, if you want to receive this Christ today, I'm inviting you right now to, to just touch the television screen wherever you're at. Or if you're watching on the internet, just watch your, uh, put your hand on your, uh, on your uh, computer screen or if, it, if you're watching by cell phone, whatever you're watching, just touch it right now. And just let's just invite Jesus to come into our hearts and lives right now. Would you just repeat after me, everyone that's out there, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sin. I am truly sorry, and I turn to you. I receive you as my Savior. I receive the free gift that you offer to me. Write my name in your book of life. And Lord Jesus, today I am yours. I will live my life for you. Write my name in your book of life and give to me the gift of your Holy Spirit. And if you prayed that today, something very wonderful is happening right now to you. There's a change going on on your inside. You can feel the hunger of God stirring you. You're feeling brand new. Something happened to you. I'm telling, find a place where you can get a Bible. Find a place where you can, you can uh, uh, go to church and be with other believers, wherever you are on, on the planet today. And so I just want to say thank you for being with us today, and thank you for receiving Christ. It says right now all the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of what God did for you today, because you came to him. Thank you for being with us today, and we'll see you the next time on A Line in the Sand. Bless you.